Naming cycloalkanes. Cycloalkanes are molecules that contain carbons in a ring. In order to name cycloalkanes, we have to start the name with cyclo, and then we use the prefix, which identifies how many carbons are inside of our ring. For example, this ring has one, two, three, four carbons, so it will be cyclobutane. Cyclo meaning that it's a ring, and butane identifies that there are four carbons inside this ring. This ring has one, two, three, four, five. It's cyclopentane. This is cyclohexane. Next, once we figured out the parent name, if there is one substituent on the ring, we do not have to give it a number, we just have to name it. So for example, my name, my ring here has five carbons, so it is cyclopentane. And let's go ahead and write it out, cyclopentane. And then I have one substituent, and this is my substituent, which contains one carbon only, and this is called methyl. So all I have to say is I have to say methyl cyclopentane. And that's the name. If there are two substituents on the ring, then we have to number from the carbon attached to the substituent with the lower alphabetical order. So for example, I have a ring here, and there are two substituents, this one and this one. The ring has five carbons, so again, it's going to be cyclopentane. Pentane meaning that there are five carbons. Cyclo means there is a ring. The two substituents, this one is called methyl, and this one is called ethyl. Which one goes alphabetically first? Methyl or ethyl? Well, E is before M, so ethyl goes first. So I have to give ethyl number one, and then I'm going to go around the ring to give my second substituent as low a number as possible. So one, two, three, four, and five. So I'm going to have one ethyl, two methyl. One ethyl, two methyl cyclopentane. Again, the reason my ethyl got a 1 is because it alphabetically goes first. E is before M. So it's 1-ethyl, 2-methyl, cyclopentane. If there are 3 or more substituents on the ring, we have to number to give the lowest set of numbers. So we have to number in a way where all of the substituents will get as low a set of numbers as possible. For example, this ring has three substituents, so how should we number? If I start here, I, for example, I could go one, two, three, four, five. So it would be one, two, and five. If I start here, I go one, two, three, four. So it would be one, two, and four. That's lower. So we can try different ways, but I think this will give me the lowest number. I go one, two, three, four, five, and six. So my substituents are number one, number two, and number four. Let's go ahead and put the name together. What kind of ring is this? This is cyclo, because it, that represents that we have a ring. And it has six carbons, so it's hexane. Cyclo, hexane. Then we have three substituents, and they're all methyls. One methyl, two methyl, and four methyl. When we have multiple substituents, we can put them together, and we can say one, comma, two, comma, four, identifying what carbons they're on. They're on carbon one, two, and four. And we have to say trimethyl. We have three methyl substituents on our cyclohexane, and they're on carbon 1, 2, and 4, and these are the, the smallest numbers that they can get. Let's go ahead and write formulas and names for each of the cycloalkanes here. Actually, we will just do names. The formula, we just have to count carbons and hydrogens, so that's easy. 
our ring here had, contains five carbons, so it is cyclopentane. Since I have one substituent only, I do not have to give it a number. And what is the substituent called that looks like a V? It is isopropyl. So I'm going to say isopropyl cyclopentane. Now let's look at the second molecule. My second molecule has two substituents. This substituent is called terbutyl. And this substituent is called ethyl. So when we have two substituents, we have to check the alphabetical order. Third does not count in alphabetical order. So only butyl will count B versus E. Who is more alphabetically, who goes alphabetically first, B or E? B goes first. So I'm going to give this one. One, two, three, four, five, and six. This is a six carbon ring, so this is cyclohexane. When we also have one terbutyl, and then we have an ethyl group on the fourth carbon. So one terbutyl, four ethyl, cyclohexane. Let's take a look at our last one. Our last molecule has three substituents. So when we have three or more substituents, we have to give as low numbers as possible. Let's try counting in different ways to see what kind of numbers we would get. I could go this way, one, two, three, four. So this way I would get one, three, and four. Let's go ahead and try another numbering to see if there is any better case scenario. I could go also one, two, three, and four. Here I would get one, two and four which is better than one three and four so this is better now that we have given the lowest numbers we can put our name together we have a six carbon ring so this is called cyclohexane and then we have a methyl on the first carbon and a methyl on the fourth carbon and an ethyl group on the second carbon so this is ethyl and then this is methyl, and this is methyl as well. E goes before M, so this will come first. So we say 2-ethyl, signifying that we have an ethyl group on the second carbon, and then we can group our methyls together and say 1,4-dimethyl cyclohexane. So the name for this molecule will be 2-ethyl, one for dimethyl cyclohexane.